guys. Uh, good evening, everybody. I pray everyone is doing well. Um, so tonight, um, welcome to our Wednesday night live. Uh, we had a last minute uh, cancellation. Um, I'm just going to mute this for a moment. Uh, first of all, we want to, uh, we were supposed to have an interview with Crystal and Debbie. Yeah. But, uh, Debbie is still not, you know, up to par. So we want to keep her in prayer and Crystal, uh, Debbie, if you guys are watching, don't worry about it. Uh, they believe me, they apologize profusely. <laughs> I talked to Crystal and Crystal was like, I told my mom we're going, I told her to go take a shower. And when I got home, we were coming and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, she felt very, she, very bad. She did feel horrible. And um, so anyway, we told her, don't worry about it. You know what? We under totally understand. And so we're praying for you. Uh, Debbie, uh, continue healing. Amen. Hopefully in the next week or two, uh, we can have them. I probably won't push two weeks. I'd love to. Uh, I know we've been pushing uh, Tony and family. So uh, we're praying for you guys too. And uh, so Crystal, don't worry about it. We're all good. Um, you are talking to uh, uh, a group of people that can figure out how to improvise <laughs> when we need to improvise. So pretty easily. We're just praying for. Um, we're just again praying for Debbie for mm -hmm. total healing, and then uh, don't push your mom too hard now, right? Don't push yeah, her too don't, hard. Don't hurt her. So, um, but we will have you guys uh, uh, join us Amen. here where we get to know uh, more about you guys and things like that. But there are a couple more families I want to interview. Uh, of course, Tony and her family. And uh, Susan and Bob. Love to have Susan and Bob Come on the back. hot seat, right? Call them the hot seat. <laughs> on the hot seat. So uh, hopefully uh, we can get that. Because I'm sure you guys are just tired of me just constantly talking. I know sometimes I get tired of me just constantly talking. So I don't, um, I don't get tired of you Oh, talking, you don't? Honey. Oh, you're so kind. You're so kind. Can you read that? Because my says, thank God she's feeling much better. Just still kind of uh, feeling weak. Amen. So we'll continue praying for total healing and uh, over her body and her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, so again, uh, good evening, everybody. Great to have you guys uh, on. Um, and uh, it is a it is definitely a blessing uh, to just, uh, you know, see what God is doing at Harvest. Amen. Um, as you guys know, um, we have a few things that are happening. Uh, one is, uh, is we have our children classes will restart in February. So we're looking forward to that. So the kids are classes. But again, I am just so amazed. I mean, the kids are doing great. I mean, they're, they are at in, in service. They are quiet. They are good. Um, they attentive. are listening, attentive. I, I watch them um, as I'm preaching, and I love uh, just their their attitude. And they are really, really good. Those those kids uh, that we have the, uh, at the children classes and stuff are really good. So kids, good keep job. up the good work. Uh, keep growing. Keep getting stronger Amen. in the Lord, and Amen. that's very, very important. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a uh, our charity Sunday, we are expecting uh, to put the solid time at the first Sunday of February. So what date is that? You can gonna, take a look at that. I think that's the first Sunday. I'm already ahead of you, hon. Um, we're going to take a look and see what that date is. Um, first February, uh, the 7th. The 7th. So February, February 7th. February, February 7th. That's a good time. February 7th, 3, 7. It's the week before uh, Valentine's Day. Do you know yeah. Valentine's Day falls on a Sunday this year? I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I don't celebrate, but I know a lot of, some people do. I'm just saying, you know. So uh, February the 7th is our charity Sunday. So if you can, uh, set that time if you'd like to volunteer. Now, we need probably about really just four or five volunteers. Yeah, only. not a lot. Of not a lot of volunteers. And what is charity Sunday? Okay, so. And then uh, clean up. And then clean up. Really, it's not, we don't want a lot of people to become part of Charity Sunday. So that's something. Um, so what Charity Sunday is, I mean, even if even if you rotate every hour or every two hours, because we're only going to do it for four hours. So kind of like a one to five. Is that right? But one to five, four hours of Charity Sunday, we can have a group of four and a group of four. Okay. And then there'll be, you know, kind of clean up per people. 
setting up people. And of course, it's going to be slow. It's not going to be like constant, you know, everyone coming in what all the time. What are you talking about? We're going to have a line. We pray. Oh, That'd be great. little faith. So, but um, Charity Sunday is, uh, is where, uh, as some of you know, uh, I own Wally Burger in Glendale, Arizona. And, you know, we sell the best burgers and euros in Arizona. I mean, the best food, really, we do. And um, so what we're going to be doing is... Uh, on that Sunday, which we're normally closed, we close Sundays. So uh, we're going to open up for Charity Sunday, and the proceeds are going to go to a local Christian charity. Um, it could be Phoenix Rescue Mission, Alongside Ministries, Salvation Army, or something like that, so that we give the finances, the proceeds to that, that uh, organization. And Charity Sunday is a great way for people to volunteer to say, look, I'm, I helped, I labored, I did things, and I cleaned up, and I did whatever, and the money went to a great program, it went to a great place. So, uh, many hands makes the load light, uh, we need people to give people the, you know, the food, we need people to clean the counters, and clean, sweep, and mop, we need people to set up, we need people to prep, you know, so... There's all kinds. Maybe you might be just sitting back there just kind of waiting and we're like, hey, I need you to prep lettuce or I need you to prep, you know, uh, you know, grab those. Just drop your job is just sit there and drop buns. Your job is to sit there and drop fries. We'll do all the grill work. I'll do all the grill work. Uh, that's for sure. Do you think you know how? I think I can pr probably do it. And I know that I have a couple people that will do prep uh, grill work really good and then the rest would be topping people. So um, there's all kinds of ways and, you know, people there be we're someone manning the grill. Um, we're going to do just really basic menu, burgers, uh, fries, maybe chicken, maybe. But I think really just burgers, fries, deep fried Oreos only as a dessert, right? Would you say just deep fried? I don't think ice cream. No, ice no. cream would be difficult. It would be difficult. So it would probably be like deep fried Oreos uh, for desserts. Um, so deep fried Oreos only and then our burgers and fries only. So it'll Jeff, be, are you wanting to volunteer very to basic. eat or help? <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> uh, put me down. Uh, I know, right? I'm going to volunteer to eat. So um, so if you are interested in volunteering, uh, let me know. Again, there's all kinds of things that you can do to volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, you can dress up in a hamburger suit and be out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. Um, so that's... <laughs> It's like, don't let him take my job. That's my job. So I'm just kidding, Sam. Uh, but again, well, uh, welcome to the seat. So I can see the voice. All right. There we go. Um, so if you are wanting to, we're going to get that as we get closer. Yes. We will um, have that posted for you to figure out where you want to and if you want to and how you want to. Okay. Amen. And then there's, of course, clean up people, people to clean up. Um, uh, people to clean up the, and sweep and greet customers. People come in. Hi, welcome. You know, right. um, of course, uh, um, a mask, you have to wear a mask. So let me just say this. Um, if you are in the restaurant serving or cooking or being around customers, you're going to wear a mask. So if you are not mask savvy in the restaurant, I totally get it. Uh, but you do have to wear a mask. Um, and then just like everything else, uh, if you have long hair, you got to tie it down, you know, or wear a hairnet or a hat or, you know, or if you have a beard, you have to kind of braid it up and make it look nice. <laughs> okay. So just like anything else in food industry, and just because it's volunteer doesn't mean we can just walk around and do whatever we want to do. It still has to be, still has a, to be clean. a clean, sanitary environment and service and et cetera. Okay. So... Just something to think about. Um, James, we'll have, we, we can do some French braids. French braids for you, James. On that's your right. beard. Who's that right there? Desert. Oh, that's uh, John. John. Hey, John. How are you, John? Um, so, uh, and Stan. Hi, Stan. Yeah, uh, John with all oh, that and, hair uh, of yours. Oh, okay. Stan says I'll donate money. All right. You can make the checks payable to Pastor Mike mm -hmm. Salmon. Uh, I'll take no less than $5,000. And uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, of course. So there's always there's all kinds of ways you can volunteer. Just come to eat. You can just come to eat. That's right. If you're going to be there, you can just come to eat um, and then uh, do it that way. So um, other than that, that's pretty much it for 
Charity Sunday. So we'll get you get you into details on that. Um, and it'll uh, be February 7th. February tentatively. 7th. Tentatively February 7th. So mark your calendars. If you go, if you usually go out <laughs> to eat after after a church, that'd be a great place to go yeah. eat. Okay. They have some good food. Yeah, they have some delicious food. So uh, that's going to be something to think about too. Okay. Um, what's that sound? Nice blue shoes. <laughs> oh, like my shoes. I know, right? They're so bright. Such a good mom. I see how she notices those. I know. Those. He just bought these shoes. Aren't these cool? He pulled them out. And he's like, aren't these so cute? I did not, or say, not say cute. I'm sorry. I didn't say the word cute. He didn't use the word cute. That was my word. He's like, don't you like these? These look so nice. I was like, wow, they are very blue. <laughs> I wanted to buy a pair of Stacey Adams shoes that had these pointy points and spiked they, they were they had, called they had spikes they had spikes on the top it was crazy but um anyway uh that's pretty much it for for that um so how are you doing hon i'm you good got, how you are wanna, you? you oh oh uh, uh, one other thing one other thing to think about guys um we uh as some of you guys have been on our facebook page on uh uh harvest christian fellowship i've shared some Every morning at six o'clock in the morning, I place out a devotion. It's called the Moment in the Word. I'm going through the Gospel of John, so uh, it begins by a small little uh, moment in the Word, and then it has a uh, what do you call it? Um, a little prayer uh, at the you know for the beginning of the day. So if you're not already subscribed to our church page on Facebook, get subscribed. To our church page, make Amen. sure you like that, and that way you you'll be able to um, get the the uh, devotionals uh, on a daily basis. I don't have them on YouTube. Um, I don't know how to link that quite yet. Um, I don't think you can with YouTube. I wish you could, but um, but they are devotionals and they are really cool. And uh, I hope you like them. Now, if you're on our website at www.hcfaz.org you can go into our website and see those videos and you don't have to have facebook to see the videos just mm -hmm. fyi but you do have to go to harvest christian fellowship page to see the video okay but you don't have to have facebook but you have to go to our uh, church page to see the video okay mm -hmm. but that's something but uh again if you are um uh if you are on Facebook, you can get those notifications uh, immediately, and then that would be able that would allow you to see what you want to see. Okay. Amen. Amen. And just so you guys know, he's not up at six a.m. posting these videos. What do you mean I'm not up at six a.m.? <laughs> Don't say that. I am there every morning, six o'clock in the morning. Well, you are here in the house, <laughs> like this. Uh, I am, but uh, I I pre-record these and I set these in order. That way, just yes, in case be. you haven't figured out and you're not, is he wearing the same shirt three days in a row? I did not wear the same shirt. I just recorded three at a time, sometimes even four at a time. So, but they are there every morning and I am, I do watch them myself again and I pray again on these things because uh, they are beneficial uh, for everybody, including myself, including Amen. myself. So, um, uh, uh, Tori Harlan, hi guys. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, it was great seeing you guys on Sunday. Harlan, Amen. you're doing great. Amen. Um, I pray, uh, uh, what do you call it? Everything went, went good with therapy and all and, and continued healing. Amen. Um, the only, what's that say? The only way pastor sees 6 a.m. is if he's coming home with a fishing pole in his hand. I toast to that. Salute. <laughs> you are not wrong. The Lord willed it. I watched the Kingdom of Heaven last night on on uh, Roku channel. It's a Roku channel, yeah, I think Roku channel. And uh, they said the King, the uh, God wills it. God wills it. God wills it. That's right. That's right. Um, just change your shirt. What's it say? Just change your shirt between takes. That way, it I know, right? All guessing. Thank you. Thank you. It's more like getting my pajamas, and that way people can kind of be like. Hi guys, good morning. Six o'clock in the morning. You know what? I'm gonna tell you all right now. This this interview thing is making me feel very young, because everything that you have seen over there on the screen you can't read, but I can read perfectly. I know, really. So it does make me feel super young right now. And I have glasses on. I know. 
I think it's uh, because these lights Thank are like you. shining. Thank you. I feel so young now. Right on me. I just feel like super old. So, <laughs> so honey, um, tell me, uh, what's going on? What did you read today? You said you want to share some, yeah, you know, some things with um, them. It was kind of funny when I spoke to Crystal about coming and and uh, she wasn't able to come. It was like God just kind of put it on my heart like, hey, why don't you share what you read this morning? Yeah. So um, uh, just a little prelude to what I what, what I want to kind of share with you guys tonight. Um, you know, we are in a weird time. You know, we have been we we're coming out of a time where really as a nation, we've had peace. You know, we've had. We, we haven't had wars. We haven't had um, unrest with the other parts of the world. Actually, there's been peace more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, peace with our, our neighbors and our enemies and our people that have been enemies or people throughout the world. Um, and we're coming into a, a, a new president today. And that brings, and, and it's not a, a president that is a, um, that supports the religious agenda. And uh, Democrats are, you know, um, although I guess Republicans too, there's a lot of war, there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of, of things. Um, there's just a lot of unsurety. And um, I was, I've been reading in First Kings and um, reading um, Solomon, how Solomon came in and he built his house and he built the house of the Lord. And, and um, I was reading... Um, and in first Kings chapter eight today, yeah. where he's dedicating the temple or dedicating the house of the Lord. And, um, and I shared part of it on my Facebook page today. Um, but I just want to want to share part of what I read because in his prayer of dedication, um, in chapter eight, um, he talks about different things about how, if this happens, then this is what will happen. He says um, in uh, verse 33, it says, when your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you and when they turn back to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this temple, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you've given, you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they have prayed toward this place and confessed your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, Israel, that you may treat them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew or locusts or grasshoppers, when the enemy besieges them in the land of the cities, whatever the plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart and spreads out his hands toward the temple, then hear in your heaven, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. And he goes on and on. And I'm not going to, I mean, chapter 8 is almost 70 verses. Um, but he talks about, so you know, how if if this happens, then this is what we should do. Yeah. Um, I, I got into a discussion with somebody at um, Costco. Uh, one of the workers there, I, you, if anybody knows me, I'm super talkative. I talk to everyone. Um, and I was talking to this guy, and it's a guy I've been witnessing to for a while and telling him, you know, you got to turn your life. He's an older an older guy. And, you know, I keep telling you, you've got to turn your life to Christ. I'm like, you're not getting any younger. What are you doing? You know? Yeah. And, and he's a patriot, just like I am. And, you know, he's like, I don't, you know, this president's coming in. And, and I said, you know. I told him, I said, you know, there is nothing that God does not have control of. And he goes, I don't even think the big man can do anything about this, <laughs> which kind of made me laugh because I'm like, I said, obviously you don't understand how God works. That's right. Um, God has control of everything. He can just snap and make whatever he wants to happen. That's happen. Right. 
You know, there's there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that he doesn't see. There's nothing that we do that he doesn't know. You know, he does not like he turns a blind eye and goes, well, I don't know what's going on over there. Or he gets like a parent with their kids. You know, we get distracted and we don't see what happens. You know, we we kids can get away with stuff, but God's not like that. No. And I told him, you know, I said, if you read in the Old Testament, I said, you see how how nation, when the nation of Israel walked with God, God blessed them. But when they pulled away from God, God let their enemies devour them. That's right. You know, and I said, I think that's where we are in the United States now. You know, we are at a time and a place where the nation has kind of turned their eyes. They don't want Christ. They don't want God in schools. They don't want God in the government. They don't want God, you know, they don't want to serve God. They don't want to do what they've called to do. People want to serve themselves. People want what feels good to them. You know, um, all this new age religion and, and, and all of this is about making us feel good. Like, oh, I want to feel good and I want to please myself. I want to do whatever that makes me feel good. That's where our nation is, is, yeah. is veered toward. And, you know, I told him, I said, why would God bless us and why would God bless our nation and if we're not serving him you know but as I read this in first kings this morning and he talks about you know if these things happen then all we have to do is call on his name you know and I even like in this one where it says um towards the bottom it said that of what I read it says whatever supplication is made by anyone or all your people you know, hear it. Now, I, I know we live in a in a generation that's more of a microwave generation. You know, we yes. think that, that we should say to the Lord, we need this, and he should snap his fingers and it should happen. Right? Yeah. That's right. I mean, we, you know, ladies that want to have babies, they pray. They're like, all right, Lord, give me a baby. And still don't have a baby. But, you know, it's in God's time. You know, if you... If we don't allow the time to accumulate, it's like um, someone who has to hit bottom before they realize that they that they need it, that they need help. You know, there's a lot of people that you hear about that in life. They're yeah. like, you have to wait for them to hit bottom before they realize what that they need help before they grab a hold. Maybe that's the period we're in now. You know, maybe we're in that period. Maybe God is is saying, you know what, you got I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna let you do what you want to do. We have and you probably know this, you follow politics way more than I do, but to have a democratic president, a democratic um court, Senate, a, a Senate, Senate, and the House, all democratic controlled, how long has it been? Quite a while. It's been a long I can't time. Remember when. Yeah. But, I mean, to me, that seems like God is, it, okay, there, let them, let them see what they want, you know. Now, as a believer, you know, we can look at that and be afraid and fear. Um, I was reminded, um, you know, we serve the same God that we've always served. He's the Amen. same God always. He's the same God of the Old Testament, the same God of the New Testament, the same God today. We serve the same God. He hasn't changed. And to me, that's reassuring because yes. I read the word and I study the word and I think about, okay, that's still the same God I serve. That's still my God. My God hasn't changed or lessened because of the time we're in. He's still the same God. Amen. And I think about... And I and I as I was thinking of of, of um, this this chain of thought I've been on, um, I, I'm reminded of Matthew in Matthew chapter eight when um, Jesus was on the boat, and he says now in in uh, Matthew eight in verse twenty three it says now when he got into the boat his disciples followed him and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so the boat was covered with the waves but he was asleep. I'm sure we remember this story. I mean, can you imagine being on the storm in a boat 
and the, the, the waves are overtaking the boat. I mean, we've been on the lake before in a storm and it's terrifying. Sure. I mean, do you remember the time that we were docked? Yeah, we were sleeping. We were sleeping and a storm hit. Yeah. And you could hear the rain on the, I think we had a tarp. tarp. We had a tarp. And the wind was blowing the flapping. And the, the thing was flapping and the, and the kids were little at that time. I was already terrified to be on on the boat because I'm thinking, oh, one of the kids are going to sleepwalk and fall off the side of the boat. <laughs> you know, I had, of course, I had mom brain with all these crazy thoughts, but um, it was still, it, still hasn't changed. It's true. He's not lying. <laughs> um, but it was terrifying. And I, I think about this scripture where they're out on the boat and it's a huge storm that the that the the waves are overtaking and Jesus is laying there asleep. Yeah. He's unconcerned. You know? And and it goes on to say, then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? That's right. You know, we can be just like those disciples. Okay. You know, we can look out at this nation and 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 be like, Lord, don't you see the the way the storm is coming and the waves are gonna overtake us. Now, Michael and I are very different when it comes to issues or problems or things. Me, I can be like these disciples and look out and just panic and freak out, you know. My flight or fight mode hits, and it's usually flight for me. Michael is the opposite. A storm hits, and Michael's like, all right, we got it. Let's do it, you know? And for that, I'm thankful because in some ways, I kind of hold him back a little bit, and in other ways, he pulls me up. <laughs> like, all right. So we kind of balance each other out, I would say. <laughs> but it's so easy, especially now, and I find myself more and more, if I... Well, I don't watch the news, but if I kind of keep my eyes on what's going on, I become so afraid. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do. I become afraid. And I think, oh my gosh, what are we, what is going to happen? What is this nation? You know, I fear for what the nation, not that I'm going to live in, but what are my kids going to live in? You know, and I often wondered, do, did our parents think about that? You know, did, you know, my parents are on here. Your parents are on here. I mean, did you guys think about that when when we were younger? Did you think, wow, what is this nation coming to? Because yeah. now I really think that. It just, it just really, I think it really depends on how connected, you know, people are when it comes down to politics. Yeah. When it comes down to, like, for example, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, well, Reagan was one of the best presidents. And to me, I was alive in Reagan, but I was young, and I was like, right. okay, whatever. You know, I didn't hear my parents say anything about him. Um, Clinton was more like my age, you know, in the sense of I was a little bit older and a little bit more informed. Um, who was before Clinton? Uh, George Bush. Bush. George Bush Sr. Uh, was really my first president that I really started to get conscience of, uh, what do you call it, um, of politics uh but i wasn't a born again christian then right. and when i was uh i was kind of like okay whatever and was i what was it 1995 96 maybe and then uh clinton became president and i didn't really think anything about it i like clinton as a matter of fact i was a uh, christian and i voted for him but i didn't know anything about democrat or the democrat agenda a lot of times we we, we do things out of just ignorance we didn't know we have no clue no one really taught us that until we come. We get a little bit older. And then um, after Clinton, we had George Bush Jr. And then that's when my eyes started really opening up to the politics. You know, when I started going, I can see the connection between our nation and religious and et cetera. You know, that I come to see there's a, a foreign connection. But a lot of people are... Um, are, you know, they're disconnected and they don't understand the connection between politics and what do you call it? Um, she said, yes, I did think about those. Things. Yeah, oh, she did. Okay. 
Um, and then really, uh, when, oh, when after George Bush was Obama and, um, that, you know, my eyes really, by that time, like George Bush, after George Bush Jr., my eyes, when, when Obama was like, okay, now we got, by that time I was very privy of what's going on right. with our But, nation, you know, you even know. for a Democratic president, Clinton did a lot of good things for religious he did. He came out with the RELUPA, Religious Land Use Institutionalized Person Act. You know, he a, did a couple other do a things. protection. He did protect. Yeah. You but know, again, religious it's just, freedom. God, God can do certain things among the 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 non the wicked. Of course, he see. can. Um. So you know, when we come down to politics, but here's the point: it's it's the, the test is the test is not that there is the bad thing is not that there is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. The test is whether or not those who are his children are going to eat of that tree. That's the evil. We're going to, there, in this world, there will always be evil. Of course. In this world, there will always be evil. There'll be evil rulers, evil people. There will be evil. Amen. Evil will always be there. Amen. That's not going to change until Christ returns. That's what, right. what, what the issue here is not that there's evil, but how do children of god react to this evil do they partake or do they not do they eat of the tree right. of the knowledge of good and evil or do they not and unfortunately there are a lot of people a lot of people who call themselves christians who partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they eat of the evil they eat and they partake of it and they eat the consequences of it our nation folks i remember when i was a, a you know i remember when President Obama was president, became president. I remember all oh, these people got up on the, you know, pulpit. This is the end of the world. This is the prophecy. The he is the beast. The mark of the beast yeah, is six six six. I remember that. And and you know, it was like the end of the world. Jesus is coming on any day now. I mean, I remember yeah. all this hoopla and, and charismatic and Pentecostal. And, and all I did was, oh, I was just yawning because that's it, it's all but yawn, 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 yawn. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I knew that this is not the sign that we look for. The sign that we see is the abomination of desolation. We can tell, okay? There, this was nothing. This was nothing. And then after Obama, um, you know, Clinton was running and people were like, oh, she's going to be president. Oh, my gosh. Now the world is really going to go to hell in a handbasket. And boom, we got we got Trump. President Trump, and suddenly everyone was like, "What? What's going on here? Do we have a reprieve?" Like, suddenly the world was like, "We're back in heaven," and and life just changed, and it was kind of weird. And pe many people were like, "Then it was on the Democrat side that we're like, oh, we're going to go into World War Three now because right. President Trump was." And he turned out, but nothing but bring world peace. As a matter of fact, Grace, one of the best at Abraham, uh, um, uh, Abraham, what do you call those? Um, peace treaty, Abraham Accords, I'm sorry, Abraham Accord between Israel and the Arab nations. And a lot of things happened yeah. that were, that would be, turned out to be a blessing. Amen. And um, so here we are now with President Joseph Biden, which is President Biden. And uh, people are kind of like, oh, and I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. And and here I am. Look, guys, um, it's sad that it is what it is. But I know I voted for a president that was going to not support abortion, that was not going to stand for same-sex marriage, that was going to support traditional marriage, that believes in world peace, that trusts in God. That's the that's the president I voted for, and there are many people, many of them who didn't. Um, I know that our black brothers, uh, many of our black uh, Christians out there, didn't vote for uh, for didn't or to have. The, I'm saying many of our black uh, brothers decided to vote for Biden because he's Democrat, and and shame on them. You know that's a sad thing, and 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 some people say, why are you attacking black people? I'm not attacking black people. I just I. Black, black or white or Mexican, I don't care who you are. If you're in the world, you're going to vote for Dem for a Democrat. Why would you vote for a, a Republican? I mean, instead of policy, whatever. But let me tell you something. If you're a Christian 
and you're a Christian and you voted for a Democrat, that's the sh shame on you. That's disgusting. Okay. I mean, you should not, you should know your scripture and, and you're either naive or you're ignorant or you're, or you're just straight out disobedient, stubborn. Um, and you let your hate and your anger, uh, vote ver versus what God wanted. And that's really what it comes down to. A lot of people voted Democrat because they did not like Trump. Right. And when you're voting for... They didn't they, really vote for Biden. They, they vote, voted against Trump. The, I don't like Trump. So you you voted based on hate, not based on the love for God. Amen. And that's a big difference. When people start voting for the love for God, they don't care who's in office. They just want to care about whether or not God's ways... And God's policies are going to be passed. And that makes a big difference. But as Suzanne says, it doesn't matter. The storm is here. Whether it's here, whether it's not, God is in the boat with us. That's right. He with, is with in the me. boat. And you boat. made the decision to vote for a president or not vote for a president that was going to support all this garbage. You decide, so good for you. You're a winner. See, he, they're victorious. We're victorious because we chose the right way. Even though President Trump did not re get reelected, we still became victorious because Amen. we voted the right way. Amen. Even though Biden won, he, those who voted for him lost because what matters is not who is the president. What matters is who you, as a born-again Christian, decided to choose and to decided to vote for. That's the way it works, Amen. you know? Um, yeah, you know... And I, I really wasn't trying to make this super political, although I have. But it's Mike, the attitude, but I have, the realm of the, the the world, you know. I have Pastor Mike over here, so you know it's going to get a little political. But you know, the thing is, is storms. Go, we have go. We go through storms. You know, yeah. we go through things. We look at uh, the world. You know, when if you keep your eyes on this, on the storm, if or on the sea, I don't even want to call it a storm. If you keep your eyes on the water, on the things around us, and not on Christ, you're going to constantly be in turmoil. Amen. You're going to have fear. You're going to have um, anxiety. You're going to have all of these emotions that God doesn't want us to carry with us. You know, it's super easy at those times to, to look at our circumstances rather than look at Christ. You know, God's promised that he will protect his people. You know, um, and most Amen. everyone on here knows our testimony or the things God has done to us. And I'll share with you just super briefly. Um, when we were heading out for our 10 year anniversary, we were heading to New York. We got the day before, two days before, um, a letter from the city coming against us. And I remember seeing that letter and I remember the fear that just consumed me. Just immediately consumed me. And I remember thinking, oh Lord. And I remember Michael getting on the phone with the prosecuting attorney and he's like, bring it. I'm ready. I, You know what? I'm going to take this. I remember him specifically saying, bring this. I can, you, what are you talking about? Bring it on. He's like, I'm going on vacation, but when I get back, it's on, you know, was his attitude. And, um, you know, fast forward as we went through the trials and I literally mean trials. I, I told him one time, I said, if I would have known I was going to spend so much time in court, I'm not sure I would have married you after <laughs> all. She would have married an attorney. Maybe. Maybe that would have been worked out better for me. Become an attorney. Huh? No. No, thank you. Um, but through that whole experience, the Lord taught me to not look at the storm and to look at him. Because I remember every time I looked at the storm or I looked at the, the thing going on around us, I was terrified. I was terrified. And I remember when... When the judge came out and told Michael 60 days and, and all, I'm, I was, I cried and I was so upset. And every time I, yeah, of course, God lets you go through your emotion. And then it's almost like he taps you and it's like, hey, I'm here. I got you. And 
um, I, I remember spending a lot of that time just reading his word and just absorbing it um, because it was food for my soul, the, the food that my soul needed. And, and, I, and I look back and I think about the blessing that we've, that we've had because Amen. of the trial that we've gone through. You know, if you don't go through things, you never get to the blessing. You know, God takes you through these big, deep valleys sometimes to, sh to, to show you that mountaintop. That's right. And I don't, you know, claim that we are on the mountaintop, but God has given us and blessed us so abundantly, not only with the church that we have now, and the, and and just the ability to to be there and to be debt free and to to do the ministry the way that that he's called us to do, um, but even in our marriage and in our kids and in our family, God has just blessed us over and over. Amen. And there was a time that there was struggle, but that struggle led to the blessing, and that's what I I think about when I read about some of these stories and i think about where we are going as a nation we don't know where we're going who knows what's going to happen we don't know we can assume the worst but who knows i mean god used a donkey god used evil kings he used good kings he used the pharaoh he's used whoever he chooses to use for whatever purpose he needs that's right you know god can use and move whoever he chooses in whatever way he chooses amen and maybe we have as a nation we need to go through a time of a, a downtime you know maybe we as a nation need to see the gas prices go up to six dollars a gallon and food lines and, and all of that for for people to wake up i pray to god we don't you know i pray to god that that's not something we see but in our lifetime you, if, if it does happen god will provide for his children he always does he'll provide see he see, he'll provide for you because you made the right decision see god is not going to punish you for making the wrong decision that's right. but all those people who voted for a democrat they're going to go if they go through hell if god decides to bring hell down to earth like very drastically God's going to let them go through hell. He's going to let them eat the quail. And he's going to let them vomit and plague out of their nose. Amen. Because that's what they wanted. That's what they get. That's but right. for us Christians who decided to vote based on what God wanted, God is going to put a hedge of protection. Amen. That's the way it works, folks. Amen. That's the way it works. God is not going to punish those who are believers in him for the stupidity, for the stupidity of those who just decide to be disobedient. Amen. That's a that's the greatest blessing. That's always been the greatest blessing. Amen. We see that in everything in our lives. When you make the right decision, when you make the right choice, even though you may not feel like you're the winner of that choice, God knows how to bless you in that. Okay. And that's what we've seen in our lives. And all the storms that we've gone through, we've gone through storms not because we've always chosen what we what is right and we've always done what i'm what i'm saying when we've gone through storms it hasn't we have gone through storms not because um the decisions we made were always fantastic um sometimes there are decisions that were right but we knew that the circumstances that fall behind being making the right decision is going to be is not going to look good okay right and when sometimes when you're doing the right thing, even when you know doing the right thing may cause a wrong consequence, that's what happens. And what I mean by that is you you got to stay true to God and serve God. And and when the world tries to say, hey, stop it, and you're not, I'm not going to stop, and you continue serving God and you continue doing what is okay. right, the circumstances or the consequences of being true, the consequences... Uh, sometimes the consequences and 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 the things that for being right for serving God aren't always great. Sometimes right. you might get punched in the face for for being vocal for Jesus. Right. Sometimes you you may get arrested for serving Jesus Christ. Sometimes you will get yelled at and cussed at for being a Christian. So you will be persecuted. And the Bible even tells you. Even Peter said, "Look, when, when you're persecuted, be persecuted for a Christian because you're a Christian." Not because you're a murderer or a busybody or a gossip or or a slander, but
but for because you believe in Jesus Christ. So right. the storms, if you go through storms and your eyes are only based on storms and thinking that, oh, the storms, Jesus was in the boat. Susanna, right. Jesus was in the boat. How can a storm happen if Jesus was in the boat? Happens all the time, folks. That's right. Happens all the time. Sometimes Jesus is in the boat. Okay, sometimes he's there. And, and the thing is, is Jesus wasn't worried. You know, he wasn't worried. He, he wasn't was, worried. He was asleep. He's asleep. Lord, wake up. We perish. Don't can't you see? That's right. People, he, Jesus was in the boat, and he was in that boat. And just mm -hmm. because he's in the boat doesn't mean the storm doesn't come. But that's the blessing because we have him as long as he's in the boat with us we're fine as long as if he's not in we bring him in the boat as he when he walked on water we told him come on into the boat come sit in the boat and the moment he did calms the, right. the everything was calm but either way i love there's a song that says sometimes god calms the storm sometimes he calms his child Amen. you know so whatever tribulations we go through like like uh, even the scriptures say, you know, when we sin, if we sin or if we find ourselves going, whatever it is, if we call on your name and repent and we turn to you and we call on you, you will hear us. Well, you, you will know, hear even us. the word says he is faithful and just. Faithful and just. Amen. So Amen. he's there, you know, and, and that's so true. And it's something we need to remember. You know, we, mm -hmm. even though the world may not do what's right. As Christians, we do what is right. Yeah, amen. We continue mm -hmm. to pray. We continue to serve God. We continue to keep our eyes on the Lord and do what's right. That's right. Um, You'll never go wrong doing what is right. That's right. You'll never go wrong doing what is right. Right. Okay? It's the way it works. That's right. Um, and, and just in closing, and this is part of what I shared on Facebook today. Um is the end of chapter 8 um, when Solomon blesses the assembly. And I, 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 this really resonated with me. It says, Then he stood and he blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise. Think about that. One word, not one word has failed. You know, when we have things going on in our life, God's word doesn't fail. That's right. It's still there and it's still true today, just as much as it was then. He says, it has not failed um, all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine with which I have made supplication before the Lord be near the Lord our day and night, our Lord God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel as they as each day may require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. Amen. There is no other. Let your heart, therefore, be loyal to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Amen. You know, Amen. what an encouragement. You know, Solomon, as you know, asked, you know, the Lord asked him, what can I give you? And because he didn't ask for great things, God gave him wisdom. And not wisdom like man gives wisdom, but wisdom only God could give. I mean, he was considered the most, the wisest man ever. And even in the scripture, it's, I remember reading a couple of days ago, how it said, there will be, there's no, there's been no one like you before, nor will there ever be another like you. I mean, that's how wise Solomon was. And to read, you know, what, what God had put on his heart to say, but, you know, let our hearts be loyal, you know, let our heart be loyal to the Lord. Let it not be connected to whatever, whoever's in office, whatever comes out, whatever may happen, but let our hearts be loyal to the Lord, to walk in his statute and keep his commandments. Amen. I mean, what greater thing can we do That's right. than to serve the Lord? You know, blessings come in service. Amen. Blessings come in all kinds of all kinds of ways. It's not just just financial blessings or 
it can be blessing of just peace of mind. Yep, peace. How many of you know that peace. peace of mind is just such a blessing from the Lord? You know, I was talking to a brother on Sunday. I'll re let you remain anonymous, but and he was telling me how, although all His of first name starts with the letter in the alphabet. That's right. Um, he said, told me about all these things that had happened, but he was like, you know what? I just, it was okay, and I just, and he had peace about it. You know, and I know him and I know in the past what he would have done. Yeah. And I see how God did give him peace. Mm -hmm. And I saw how God, what God did, you know, and he may not think it's a big deal, but I noticed it. And I thought, wow, look at how far you've come because he put, he, he's grown and he's put his trust mm -hmm. more and more in the Lord. Amen. And he sees how God has moved. Isn't that great when you see that growth? It's awesome. It is, it it's is awesome. awesome. Especially it's when awesome. you see people who've come out of the world mm -hmm. and have been a completely different person and then they become a new person. Yeah, they, they're growing and they become new. And they and their Amen. faith just increases abundantly more and more. Amen. It is a blessing. It's it a is. blessing. And one day Sandy Ramsey will get like that, but until Whatever. then we're praying for her. But... Um, you know, that is a blessing. You know, it's a blessing that she hasn't murdered you yet. <laughs> I know, right? We we love seeing... Uh, I don't think he would do that we, to me, we, so <laughs> she would do that to me. We love seeing uh, the growth, uh, you know. And like you said right there, uh, read that last part, that last, if you loyal step, last statement. Uh, let your heart, therefore, be loyal to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Amen. Let your heart be loyal. What Amen. a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Um, you know, I try to be nice, Christine. Uh, what a blessing. Listen, if we follow him and we will understand the God that we serve. Amen. Guys, you serve the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim. The Elohim is the Lord God. God alone. He blesses. He created all things. Listen, he can he can make nothing into something. Amen. He can open up Amen. doors. If you are faithful and serve him. Amen. And you put all your heart and your trust in him, relying fully and completely in him. Amen. The Elohim is awesome. God That's is right. awesome. He the blessings he provides, the, the things he opens up. Amen. And there is nothing, there's absolutely nothing that he cannot do. He is Amen. Yahweh. He is the Lord God. And he has given us the power through his son, Jesus Christ, to come to him, to seek him. Amen. And to and to and he hears us when we call on him. Amen. And and we need, to rem, we need to see what the prophets and all others have seen. He is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. You know, our world... Our world that we live in, when we look at it, um, what's our worth? What's our world worth? Really, nothing, nothing, but yet everything. Amen. Our world, when you look at it, it's nothing and yet everything. We see God in everything, in every place, doing what He does, and 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 doing what His will is in our lives. Amen. And that is so so important to see Him working in in this world and seeking right. working in our lives amen. so this this evening seek his face amen know that he loves you he's calling out to you and 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 it's never too late to turn to him it's never too late to do the right thing it's never too late to do the right thing that's right if you take steps to do the right thing one day you'll look in the mirror and go my goodness how did i get where i'm at because you took the steps to make to do the right thing and it's baby steps, right? It's like every day you do the right thing every right. day. Those little steps that you make will ultimately bring you to the, the right path. And when you're on that right path, you'll, it'll ultimately take you to the blessing that you need to get to. It doesn't happen overnight. That's right. It takes those little tiny, tune, a little tiny, you know, adjustments here, adjustment there, adjustment there. But eventually you get to the place where God wants you Amen. to be. And don't let your... Don't let your thorns stop you. Don't let your mishaps stop you. Don't let your mistakes stop you. Don't let your shortcomings stop you. Because I know, I understand that some of you battle through things in your life. You know, you battle through the flesh. You battle, I mean, you remember what Romans 7 says. 
we do the things we don't want to do we we battle through things but don't let them stop you and and discourage you from serving god that's right keep serving him keep your eyes on him keep trusting in him if you fall get back up if you that's fall right. get back up that's right serve him keep your eyes and your trust in that's him right. you only fail if you quit if you quit getting up quit, amen and turn away you can grow learn learn your triggers learn things that trigger whatever it is and stay away from those things and when you stay away from those and you're doing the right thing you'll see that the blessing of god is there and mm -hmm. it continues so making the small right decisions brings you ultimately to the place where god wants you to be amen amen and you know in times that you are overwhelmed or you know you you feel discouraged um and i and i've said it before get into worship turn on worship music and worship your way through it and some people, I don't like singing. Okay, get on your knees. Pray your way through it. You know, change your environment. Change what you're doing. You know, I can't tell you how often you can get so caught up in whatever it is that all you need is a change. Change your environment. Put on the music. Open up your word. Read. And with that, the Lord put it on my heart to tell, to say this, but... Don't be afraid to get into his scripture. And I mean Old Testament. I can't tell you how many people are like, well, I'm kind of afraid to read. You know, the Old Testament's kind of hard to read or I don't understand. Let me tell you, the Old Testament, I've spent the last few years focusing more in the Old Testament than I ever have in my life. And I, my faith has grown so much Amen. more because I read that, that scripture and I say, Wait, that's the same God I still serve. That's right. You know, and I look at the stories, you know, Samuel, Jonah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of these stories. And you read them and and you're it's so encouraging. You know, yeah. I know it's a lot to take in. And part of you're like, oh, there's a genealogy. Well, you know what? It won't hurt you to skip that genie. Keep no. going. That's right. I used to think when I was uh, younger in Christ, I was like, well, that's wrong to skip. But then I learned genealogies have their place and their reason. But when you just are trying to understand the scripture, it's okay to just kind of push past them. But read, open up that Old Testament and read it. You will be so glad that you came to understand those scriptures more. Amen. I've always said stories. that. We talk about Old Testament. I've always said that. You'll never understand the God of the New Testament until right. you read the Old Testament. Amen. And you know, a lot of people who are Christians today, they only know Jesus. That's right. They only know God There's of the New so Testament. It's not that it's a different God, but they just can't get the fullness of God That's until right. you read the, the Old Testament. Amen. When you understand who God is in Genesis... You understand who he is in Exodus. That's and these right. are the two main books, really, Genesis, Exodus. If you jump to Joshua, you jump to Judges, and then you get into 1st and 2nd Kings, or 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, you really come to understand who God really is. Amen. Just those, those how many books is that? Genesis, Genesis. Exodus, Joshua, Judges, 1st mm -hmm. um, and 2nd like Samuel, in first and second kings just those eight books i can guarantee you just those eight books you'll you'll come to really understand god you'll have a different perspective but really understand who god really is what he's done amen. how powerful he is how mighty he is just staying amen. on those eight books alone that's it amen. okay not major those eight books you come to really see who god is because I can't tell you how many times we I've preached and people go, that's not, I don't see God doing that. I'm like, you have no idea, yeah. do you? You should see who God is. Yeah, you I mean, should open that up and you look. You should open up that up. And I mean, even judges how God sends enemies and does all these things. That's right. If you stay on those eight books, just in the Old Testament, just study those and get into new, man, you come to realize. Amen. So and, and, anyway, amen. So let's go ahead and open up this time for prayer. Thank you amen. guys for joining us tonight. Amen. Again, Crystal and Debbie, we continue praying for you and your family for amen. continued and full healing. Um, so we can have you here one day. Um, and then uh, praying that we can get other people. Um, I know I've been pushing Tony and her family. I said, oh, next week, next week, next week. So I think I'm going to, I might have to bring them in this week because that poor girl, I keep pushing. I said, okay, next week. So I said, I'm going to have Crystal this week. How about next week? So we're going to push you. We might have to do a flip-flop. We'll see. We'll pray on it. We'll Amen. see what's going to happen, okay? 
So, um, but yes, definitely keep our brothers and sisters in prayer. Amen. If you have prayer requests, go ahead and put it down. We're going to pray for you, and then we're going to move over to the prayer board uh, from now until then. But uh, we do love you guys. We do continue to thank you all for your continued support and your blessing. Amen. Um, you guys have been awesome. I know that uh, we've had a lot of faithful people giving and mm-hmm. and 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 uh, supporting the ministry. And as you guys know, it is it is really a blessing. We've been seeing God do wonderful, wonderful things in our lives. And, um, you know, despite the things I always say to people, I said, keep your eyes on the Lord. Trust Amen. in him. Focus on him. God owns the cattle on a thousand That's hills. Right. A cattle, the cattle on a thousand hills. There is absolutely nothing that God uh, cannot give to you. He will provide. He Amen. is a provider. He meets our needs. He provides. Amen. Healing and strength, we pray definitely for for Bob and John Amen. and for you, Marty, continue praying for them. We have a God who's a healer. He's Amen. Jehovah Rapha. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, do not, uh, one of the things, do not forget the benefits. And one of the benefits of knowing the Lord is healing Amen. in the name of Jesus. Pray for our nation, our children, continued healing. Amen. Amen. Pray for our nation. We seek God. We, um, we ask God for his total sovereignty and his hand over our nation, over our children. Amen. Um, it is up to us in our lives to raise our children in the ways of God. We cannot rely on government. We cannot rely on schools. We cannot rely on anything. You always hear someone say to me, oh, you know, they took prayer out of schools. They didn't take prayer out of schools. Okay. It's, it's very important to understand they didn't take prayer from school. Your children can still pray at school. Your children can still read the Bible at school. That's right. Your children can still do these things. What they did do is they took away uh, praying uh, uh, stu- or teacher-led, government-led prayer, right. teacher-led prayer, teacher-led Bible reading out of schools. And I think rightfully so now because, you know what, I don't want a Muslim teacher to pray you know, Allah Akbar, and I don't want her to teach my kid the Quran. Um, so they did that just to do that. So nonetheless, your kids can still pray. Kids can still read the Bible. Encourage your children to do so. Okay. Um, Christy was to say, seems the daughter of a friend of Sandy's. We'll pray for her in the name of Jesus. God Amen. bring healing Amen. over her. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance. They still have it, don't they? I'm, yeah, my kids still say. We still say pledge of allegiance. So that's cool. Actually, in our mm-hmm. our meetings, and uh, we still say one nation under God in our allegiance. Keep your eyes on the Lord and not on. Tori says, "Pray that I keep my eyes on the Lord and not on the craziness of the this world." God is the only constant. God will protect His children. You Amen. know it, sis. You got it. Amen. You got it. So you're and right on track. Sometimes, guys, this thing. Is a blessing and a curse. Sometimes you just take it, turning it off, putting it away, and, and walking off. That's right. Amen. Taking off the TV. Amen. Unless you're on uh, Facebook watching this. That's right. You should be. So we definitely pray. Oh, uh, what's that? Thing? They took. Uh, they took saying under God. Uh, we, I don't think I don't, they did. Ours. I know all our kids do it. I don't know. Maybe some other kids did, but. I don't know. Um, it's still in elementary schools. I know that. I know yeah. in all our kids, all our high school kids, they all still say under God. Well, the high school doesn't do the Pledge of Allegiance oh, anymore, the Pledge but the allegiance. elementary and middle you know, school do. Um, so either way, it is not up to our schools to teach our kids God. That's it true. is your your it's duty, your responsibility. your responsibility. So teach your children God. Amen. Teach them. And I think you guys know that. Amen. You know that. Amen. I don't rely on the world. I don't even want the world to... If, if, my, if my school, kids' school came to me and said, we want to teach your children about the Lord, I would say to them, no, thank you. Yeah. Tell me what makes you qualified to teach my children about Jesus. First of all, what are you going to teach them? Let me, I'm the one who's going to teach them. You don't want strangers to teach your children about God and you don't even know what they're going to teach. Are they going to teach the Bible? Are they going to open up the Bible? Are they going to tell you about God? Amen. You know, so we don't want you. It's very important for parents. It is your, our responsibility to teach our children the Lord and keep Amen. them, um, keep them serving God and keep them doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. I would say no, thank you. So we don't know. Um, we Listen, guys, but let me just say this. There's a vacuum out there because if you're not teaching them God, the world is going to teach them the devil. 100%. Because you have, they have friends out there that are going to show them all kinds of stuff. So it's very important that you teach your children 
Be proactive in your kids' lives. Amen. Be proactive in your children's life by teaching the Lord, responsibility for the Lord. Keep their eyes on and trusting in Jesus. Amen. Very, very important. And you guys who bring your children to church, good for you. Bravo. I know it's, there's some kids, oh, I don't want to go. You get them, keep going. Good for you. Bravo for you. Because your attitude and your attendance and you being there in church service, and your kids are going to see that. Your They're going to know that. faithfulness will be seen. Yeah, when I came to Jesus Christ, you know what stood out? I remember my dad taking us to Catholic Church even when we didn't want to. We did not want to. But my dad would be like, come on, you're going, you're just going. And then all of that, when we got there, we just wanted to sit down and stand up, sit down. But God, my dad like, nope, get up. You're going to go become altar boy. Get up and go do this. We served. We served God. My dad taught us how to serve. My dad taught us, and we did not like it. But you know what? Now as an adult, I look back, I thank God for the responsibilities he pushed us into. And the even things I didn't want to do, now I'm doing. But I'm paying him back now because I'm teaching him to do things he doesn't want to do sometimes. Like, stop winding the reel. Wait till we're going or else your, your, your line's going to get stuck on the ground. But anyway, that's something else. Um, I bring your mother-in-law to church. Oh, you do? You do? Yeah. And one day she will be saved. But until then, we're still praying for her. Um, so we do thank God. Anyway, Amen. I do love my mother-in-law, even though I tease her to death and, and uh, what do you call it? Um, and she but, adores you. Yeah, so. she does. She does. But anyway, thank, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to pass it over to the prayer uh, board. And if you have any you other, pr huh? you yeah, if you have any other prayer requests or anything, now's the perfect time. We love you. Christ be with Bye, you. Guys. In Jesus' Good name. Night.